As we head into the new year, one of the things that we have to do as the CEOs of our companies, as VOpreneurs, is we've got to take a little bit of time to pay attention to where the trends are going in 2024. Now, there are a lot of people who are a lot more qualified than me who can talk about trends in voiceover, trends in the commercial read, trends in the e-learning read, trends in the promo read, whatever the case may be. There are also people who are a lot smarter than me and a lot more qualified than me who can talk about things like trends in online casting. So all of these other different aspects of your business, trends in equipment and studio and sound and all of that sort of stuff. So what I want to talk about, what I feel like I'm qualified to talk about, are marketing trends for 2024. So what I want to do in this episode is give you five different things that you should be thinking about that I have been paying a little bit more attention to. Uh, because I think these are going to be some really important marketing trends that can have an impact on your business as we move forward in the new year. So let's start with the first one, which is personalization. Now, this probably seems like really, really, because you talk about this all the time. You've been talking about this for years. Yes, you're right. I have been talking about personalization in your marketing for years, but it is going to become even more important as we move into 2024. So Let's define personalization because I think for some people, the assumption is with email marketing, for example, if I write a letter, but I throw in some merge tags, so those little tags that add in the person's first name or add in the company name, as long as I've done that, then I've personalized the email. And while that is certainly a form of personalization, that is not what I'm talking about here. If you're still sending or if your focus is to send or if your intention is to send generic messages that are personalized using merge tags, I think you're going to struggle in 2024. I'm not going to tell you that you're not going to get results. I think if you throw enough spaghetti at the wall, some of it is inevitably going to stick. But what I'm saying is that if you add personalization into your marketing efforts, I think that you can increase your results quite a bit. The biggest form that I think this is going to take is in targeting. You need to be able to hyper target your marketing messages. If you do a new commercial demo, you've got a, a brand new JMC commercial demo that you can't wait to tell people about, and you blitz that out to every person that you've ever worked with, that is not a targeted personalized message because your e-learning clients do not care about your new commercial demo. So, the form of personalization that we're talking about and, and the form that I think it needs to take is making sure that the right messages are getting to the right people. This is where a CRM comes into play because a CRM allows you to get hyper-targeted. I can send an email specifically to my commercial clients, letting them know about my new commercial demo. But then I could write a slightly different worded message to my commercial prospects, people who haven't hired me yet, letting them know about my commercial demo because that's two similar and yet distinct audiences. But because I have the ability to break down my database, I have my ability to do that level of targeting. That's what I think we're talking about with personalization this year. Do you have the ability to send very strategic targeted messages to leads, to an audience of prospects, to an audience of clients, to your commercial people, to your e-learning people, to your corporate people. So having the ability to get super hyper-focused. I would say the other thing is generic newsletters are on their way out. They've been on their way out for years. I haven't sent a generic newsletter to my voiceover clients in years because again, it's not that personalized. It's not that targeted. So Think of it this way. If you are going to put yourself into somebody's inbox, there are two considerations that need to come into play in order to determine whether or not this is a personalized enough message. Consideration number one is, does this email add value to this individual? The thing that you are saying, the thing that you are telling them about, does it add value? So if you are sending out an email newsletter to talk about all of the commercial projects that you booked in 2023, and that's landing in the inbox of an explainer client, then it is not a targeted, focused, personalized message. So number one, does this information add value to the recipient's inbox? And number two, does this recipient need to receive 
this email. These are the things that I think that you need to be considering as we move into 2024 and focus even greater on an even more personalized experience with your email marketing. Number two on the list is SEO. Now, I will be the first to admit, I've said it before, you can go back, you can search the records if you want, but I'm telling you straight up, I would never say that I'm not a believer in SEO. I would just say that it was never my focus because my focus was always on actively driving traffic to my website. Whereas SEO, I think is more passively driving traffic to your website. So what I mean by that is, is an active marketing strategy is when I am reaching out to clients or leads or prospects and I'm doing it via email or I'm doing it via social media and I'm giving them a call to action that is to visit my website to listen to my demos. I'm actively driving traffic to my website. So I'm trying to get them to click that link that I have sent them to get them onto my website. The passive strategy, SEO, is doing things on your website that allow it to be found in search so that when people are doing a search, Google, whatever, your website comes up and that brings traffic to your website in a more passive manner. So my focus has always been on actively marketing my website. But that's something that I think is going to change in 2024 because the buyers that are out there today, most of them, have never known life without Google. And so if I do a search for you on Google and nothing comes up, are you even really real? It's a valid question. Because what is the first thing that we do when we are looking for a new product, a new service? We Google it. We Google it to see what we can find. We Google it to see what other people are saying. We Google it to see if it's even there because if we can't even find it, then maybe it wasn't even legitimate in the first place. And so we're using Google as a vetting tool. Is this real or is this a scam? And so for this buyer that's out there who's never known life without Google, I think that SEO is going to be an even bigger factor going forward. And that is why SEO is going to be one of the areas where I'm going to be devoting more attention, more time, more effort to my website in 2024. I want to make sure that I am getting found. I want to make sure that for the keywords that I choose to target, that I am coming up on page one. And it is possible to get yourself on page one. Now, this could be a strategy that you decide to do on your own. I know people who have done it. They've taught themselves how to do SEO and done it very successfully. This could also be the type of thing that you outsource to someone. You have an SEO expert or even an SEO agency do this for you. And it doesn't strictly mean writing a blog, although that could be one of the things that you do. It could be in the genre-specific pages that you create for your website. It could be in the way that you're tagging the images that are on your website. It could be in the way that you are using keywords and the copy that is written throughout your website. There are a lot of strategies at play here. But I definitely think that SEO is going to be an even bigger factor as far as marketing trends go for 2024. And that is one of the reasons why I am going to be focusing more effort on it myself to try and make sure that I'm ranking. Number three on the list is video. I've been talking about video for a while. I think that we have seen video become a more popular, more increasing trend over the last couple of years, but that is only going to expand even further in 2024. And I think more specifically short form video, because that is the form of video that has been adapted by and large by every single social media platform. You can post your short form video content on YouTube, on TikTok on Instagram, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on X, on threads, everywhere. You can post the short form video content everywhere. I think if you think about your own consumption habits, I can tell you from my own experience with the little bit of time that I spend scrolling through social media, I spend more time watching short form content most days than I spend watching longer form content. And so this is a trend that I've I talked about in 2023, but I'm going to continue to talk about in 2024 because I think that every single platform that has adopted, pushed, encouraged short form video content, I think they're only going to double down on it in 2024. And so if you are not currently creating some form of short form video content, 
I think that it's something that you should be seriously thinking about. I think it's something that you need to be adding into the mix. I will also say, and I've talked about this in my interview that I did with Hunter Peterson and Hunter touched on this. Go back and listen to that episode of the podcast. I'll, I'll link it up in the show notes. You do not need to have Hollywood quality production on your short form video content in order for it to be effective. You need great content. But I think even that phrase, great content, can be misleading. That does not mean that in order to market your voiceover business, you need to be giving great voiceover tips to voice actors because you have to have great voiceover content. Your great content could be educational. Your great content could be inspiring. It could be motivating. It could be historical facts. It could be talking about science. It could be sharing a passion or hobby. It could be in making somebody laugh or making somebody smile. It could be in showcasing your ability as an actor. There's a million different ways that you can create great content that adds value that isn't strictly limited to teaching somebody something about voiceover. And so give yourself permission to freely explore that as well as you create this content, but also knowing that You've got a lot of different places where you can share it because so many of these platforms have now embraced it. So I would say that you need to be thinking seriously about making short form video content part of your marketing plan for 2024. Number four on the list is speed. We live in an instant gratification society. We go on Amazon. We find the thing that we want to buy. We click one button and it arrives at our front porch the next day. We log into an online casting site. We see auditions. We walk into the booth. We audition. We have the instant gratification of knowing we just submitted for a job. When we post something to social media, we get the instant gratification of seeing the little red numbers start to pile up on the bell icon because we've got notifications. When we send a text message to somebody, if they don't respond in two minutes, we wonder why they are ignoring us. Look, we're screwed. What can I tell you? This is what social media has done to us. Cell phones and social media. We have no patience. We have no attention span. And that is why speed is going to be a marketing trend in 2024, but not quite how you think. Speed does not specifically mean that you have to be able to deliver every voiceover in an hour, because I don't think that that is the case. However, you might need to respond to most of your emails within an hour. If somebody is inquiring about a voiceover, if somebody is asking for a quote, if somebody's looking for an audition, uh, if somebody's asked a question through your website, those emails you need to respond to quickly. Now, your response may be simply acknowledging that you've received your, their message and that you will get back to them with a more detailed and thorough response in a couple hours because maybe you're busy and you can't respond right now and that's okay. But if people are emailing you and you're not responding until a day or two later, and I'm talking clients, clients and prospects in particular, people who are looking to hire you for voiceover work, if you're waiting that long to respond because you've got other things going on or you've got a day job or you have very strict rules about when you answer emails or whatever, you may miss out on opportunities. That's the speed that I'm talking about in 2024. That is the speed that is going to be a marketing trend in 2024. You've got to be able to respond to messages quickly because we no longer have the ability to wait. The number five marketing trend for 2024 is mobile first. I still do a lot of stuff on a desktop computer. I work on my iMac all day long when I'm in the studio. I may be or may be becoming the exception to the rule. Again, I say think about your own website habits. Maybe you work off of a laptop. But when you're not in the office, you're working off a phone, maybe a tablet. When you're surfing the internet, there are times when you're probably sitting in your office, and I know I'm guilty of this. I may be sitting in my office and I may be at my desktop, but I want to look something up quickly and I grab my phone, even though I'm sitting right there, right in front of my computer. But maybe I don't want to change a window or I don't want to mess up what I'm doing right now or whatever. So I pick up my phone. We're using our phones more and more and more and more and more. We use them when we go for a walk. We use them when we're driving. We use them when we're sitting in a restaurant. We use them when we're in the bathroom for crying out loud. I've got a brother who, a brother-in-law who I is like, oh, 
he must be in the bathroom now because he starts sending me TikTok videos. So I always know when he's when he's in the bathroom. Sounds really weird. But hey, you know what? If you're laughing at this, it's because you either know somebody who does the same thing or you do the same thing yourself. Point is, we're spending more and more and more and more and more time on our phones. And so mobile first will continue to be a trend in 2024. What does that mean for you specifically as a voice actor? Mostly it has to do with your website. One of the things that I do every time I do a coaching session with a voice actor and they ask me about their website, one of the first things that I do is not bring it up on my desktop, but I bring it up on my phone. What does it look like? Is the layout of the website mobile friendly? Is it a responsive design? Does, does the website shape shift to fit the size of the screen that I am using? How easy can I navigate that website? Do I have to go searching for links? Can I find links? Or is it just an endless scroll, which in a lot of cases is even better? What about the demos? How easily can I play the demos on my phone? How easily can I download the demos on my phone? This is really, really important. If this is something that you've never done or you haven't done recently, I would encourage you to get out a phone and go to your website and don't search it as yourself because you're too close to it. Surf your website as a potential buyer. And if you don't feel like you can do that objectively, get a friend or a colleague to go to your website on their phone and look at it from the perspective of a buyer and judge how easy it was to do everything that they need to do. When I go onto your website on my phone, if I cannot easily fill out the form on your website from a phone, I may move on unless there's an email address that I can click. And then I can just have it open my default email program, which I would encourage everybody to do, by the way. So think about these things. Does it look good on mobile? Does it load quickly on mobile? Are the demos easily playable and downloadable on mobile? Is contacting you an easy experience on mobile? These are all things that matter in making sure that you have a mobile first website and that you are adopting mobile first in your marketing plan. Now, again, this does not mean that we are abandoning desktop computers or laptops. Of course we're not. It just means that we are designing, operating, marketing with mobile in mind. It's not just your website, by the way. When you're sending out your emails, a lot of voice actors like to use really fancy graphic oriented signatures. What does that graphic oriented signature look like on a mobile device? Does it take up the entire screen when I try to open my email? Is it a large file size that causes the email to download even slower? So in every aspect of your marketing for 2024, you need to be thinking mobile first. So everything needs to be personalized and that is more than just adding merge tags. You need to be thinking about SEO always because i think more and more that is going to become a factor for driving traffic to your website are you creating short form short based video content and using that across multiple social media channels i think this is probably one of the most untapped marketing tools by the voiceover industry because we're afraid of video or afraid of on camera and i don't think it needs to be that way Make sure that you are responding to everything quickly because nobody has any patience anymore. And make sure that you are taking a mobile first approach to your marketing through your website, but also through your email marketing and in how you are reaching out to contacting and engaging with potential con uh, contacts and buyers. And because you know me, but wait, there's more. I've always got to give a bonus tip. I can't believe that I'm about to say this, but this is my bonus tip for 2024 because I think there might be something here. My bonus marketing trend for 2024 is actually going to be threads. Now, when threads came out, and for those of you that maybe aren't familiar with threads, threads was the new social media platform that was launched by Meta, parent company of Facebook, and it was supposed to be their answer to Twitter slash X. It set record-breaking pace for growth when it first came out. And then it became a ghost town. And even though I owe lots and lots of people, and I'm talking like, you know, tens of millions of people were signing up for the platform, 
there wasn't really a whole lot of people that were actually sticking around and using it after the first month or two. And so I walked away from threads because I was like, this is not worth the investment in time that it would take me to create content for another social media platform. But as 2023 progressed, that started to change. And more and more people started coming back and more and more people started paying a little bit closer attention to what was going on on threads. So if you are somebody who is over X, threads might be the place that you want to focus some of your attention. If you want to get in early on what could become a very popular marketing trend in 2024, threads might be a place where you want to pay close attention. It does claim now to have a hundred million monthly users. So that's something worth paying attention to. And I would say this, if you're still not ready for another social media profile in 2024, which is fair, or you're still not convinced that threads is going to actually take off at the bare minimum, I would encourage you to set up your account and grab your username. If for no other reason than for protecting your brand, get the username that you want to get so that if six months down the road, this proves to be a really hot marketing trend in 2024 threads proves to be a really hot marketing trend in 2024. At least you'll have your account and your username if you decide to start using it at that point. So it might be worth taking a second look at threads. If you signed up before and you're one of the ones that walked away like me, or if you just didn't even bother now, it might be worth checking it out.